So my name is Jim Harris and I'm retired, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, prior to that, I was for 13 years plus the Director of Health Access and Josh and I worked together for a long time. Um, I joined the, well I was on the Chamber Board. Uh, when I went to Health Access, I got appointed to that board, I got elected to that board. Served on the board a couple of, I don't know, a couple of times, I don't know. Anyway, got involved, joined the Chamber and um, as a nonprofit person, um, I saw the value in connecting with leaders in the community. It's just, it's just the best thing in the world. Um, nonprofits have a tough road to hoe as far as um, having a presence and having support. And so I found the chamber to be a wonderful connection. When ambassadors opened up to me, when I went on the ambassadors committee, uh, it gave me even more inroads into where we're growing, what part of the communities are growing, uh, what types of businesses are coming into the community. Uh, to connect with oil and gas when it was booming, what a wonderful thing for, for nonprofits and everybody else. Um, I believe in the Chamber of Commerce because I think that chamber members should do business with chamber members. I think that we should encourage everybody to be a member of the chamber. Uh, we put out a we put out a membership directory, and, and I've said this to several groups. If I need a service, I'm going to go to my chamber membership directory to see if there is somebody that provides that service that's also a member of the chamber. So they've got some skin in the game. They're in this for the greater good of the whole. So uh, I think I was supposed to talk about why why it was important to me when I was working. Uh, why it's important to me now is I, I like to um, I like to network with folks. I'm not actively working, but I'm involved in a lot of different boards. I'm on the hospital board, the Goodwill board, and you're always looking for expertise in the community. And so, as a matter of fact, we're trying to find some additional members for the Goodwill board. I'll talk to Jeannie after lunch. Uh, <laughs> now that I'm semi-retired, yeah, yeah, lots of time. Lots of time. Uh, but it is ambassadors is it's a fun group. Uh, I think that um, I think that Marla made the point when we first started that it's it's kind of informal because we really are. Uh, we laugh and have a good time, but we also have an agenda. We get a lot of work done. We try to uh, connect with folks not just one time, but follow up with them. So if somebody new joins the chamber, we try to make a contact very quickly get them the information to bring them into the chamber and then have them come to events where they can partner up with one of us. So we'll say, well, there's a ribbon cutting next week or there's an open house, there's a business after hours. I'll meet you there. You know, we'll get a glass of wine and we'll, we'll talk. Uh, you're building friendships, building relationships and those become business relationships. So I think it's important. Uh, did I answer your question? Yes, you did. I did, see, yes. I thought I did. Thank you, Mr. Harris. You're welcome. So. Um, my starting with the ambassador, I started with the leadership Harrison County and they pulled me in on the ambassadors, which I enjoy a lot. I do a lot of volunteer work. So what happens is I go to the ambassadors meetings and functions and I connect up with a lot of people who then in turn, I say, is there anything that I can do for you? Can I connect you up with somebody? How about this? They give me information and then I in turn, give them back whatever they might need, whether it be a volunteer or connecting them with another organization. Um, it's a great organization. I've learned a lot. I used to be pretty shy, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> I got was, yeah. And it has helped me tremendously uh, to be on the board and to help people. And that's my biggest thing is I wanna help people, uh, connect them up, that's what I do, and that's what the ambassadors do. Anyway, I'm Betty Waddy, and as with Dion, I do a lot of volunteer work in the community, and um, being on the ambassadors committee has been awesome, because I've got to network with different people who have interest in different areas of volunteering and some of the agencies, and it's been real awesome to hook them up and say, oh, well, we do this, and we do that, and you know, what we don't do, I know somebody that does do, or there's Dionna, she she does that group, she's awesome with it, but um, 
it, it really has been fun. You know, you get to meet a whole lot of people and go to a lot of different places and 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I appreciate you for that one. Yeah, I know. It was not a good hair day, but when is it? But it really, ha it really is a lot of fun. And, you know, I welcome in any of the new ambassadors because I think you'll really like it. It's a, we are serious, but it is a lot of fun going, right, Jacqueline? <laughs> Right. Going to um, the different places, and like I said, you really do get to meet a whole lot of people that do a whole lot of different things. And I think really, I had a ball at the doggy daycare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was probably one of the most interesting because if anybody knows me, they know I definitely have an obsessive compulsive disorder with animals, especially mine. But um, welcome everybody, and um, I hope you enjoy it, sir. The ambassadors, everybody just told you all the things that they benefit from personally in their business or how it enriches their lives to be part of the ambassadors. And it is true, we are a really casual, super fun, hyper-focused group that gets a lot done. Um, the, the chamber is a place where local businesses connect with each other. And that's what keeps our world happening, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, Mike and I meeting each other and you know us being able to give information to somebody new or maybe somebody that's been in business in Harrison County for 50 years you know we're all the world is changing so fast businesses don't always know what another business does people are evolving things are changing and the ambassadors are the people who are trying to be in the know and trying to make sure that we can be a resource um, to the other businesses and at the very least just get them to whoever they need to be with. Um, the chamber is also so important because the, the Kathy is a lobbyist mm -hmm. and she represents small business uh, when she goes to um, the legislature. So there's we have a leadership group. So if you're um, an executive in a company and you have an employee that shows promise and you're wanting to bring them along, you're wanting to get them some leadership training. Um, our leadership group is very inexpensive and it can replace something that, you know, a business might have to pay $5,000 to get. It also puts them and the people in that class in contact with people. If you've never been in the leadership group, that is definitely your next move after this. You have to do that. Um, and as Jim said, whenever we meet people at the ribbon cuttings, we all know what's appropriate and not. So you know, you can tell if a business is too crazy busy, you're gonna thank them for being at that ribbon cutting and letting us be a part of it, how excited we are that they're in the community, and then you're gonna give them your card and you're gonna back away. The, the ribbon cutting is not a place for you to solicit a business. That comes later in the process. When you go to a ribbon cutting or when you go to any function that is for the chamber, this, this group of people is representing the Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Commerce's mission. So you are the ones that are, as Jim said, saying, you know, hey, I know you're really busy today. Maybe I could come see you next week. And then when you get there, you're telling them, I know you're a small business. If you have somebody in your group, you know, this is what leadership does. This is what's happening in the chamber. There's an event. A lot of people do not want to go walking in an event by themselves. You will find that some of the most prominent people who have some of the most influential jobs may not be someone who just is comfortable going someplace by themselves. So that is where we also come in. We are the connect. So you're gonna say, the chamber dinner's coming. Did you know we're gonna have two senators at the chamber dinner? Everybody's gonna be there. You do not wanna miss it. Would you like to sit at my table? You know, could I call Kathy and help you get a reservation? That is the role that the ambassadors play. Then what happens is, in the flow away from that, that's where you will make business connections to help yourself and your companies. And that's also where you're gonna make friendships because through the chamber board leadership and the education committee and the ambassadors are some of the best friends I've ever had in my entire life and three of them are here. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a great group to be. The commitment is extremely small. It's powerful but small. 
All you have to do is come to one meeting a month, and you have to come to as many ribbon cuttings as you can, and you have to do what you already do in business every day, make a connection with somebody else and involve them in the chamber. It's just, it sounds too simple to be true, but it's how we operate and it's been wonderful. So we hope that you guys, after today, decide that you'd like to be part of our committee. Um, we are thrilled with who, who we have here and the other potentials that we have that weren't able to attend today. And you guys would be wonderful assets to our committee and we're really looking forward to spending the next year with you. Thank you. A couple of things, yeah. Pam mentioned the Chamber's uh, mission, and our mission is to create a vibrant and uh, active community and, and business climate through active and engaged members. So um, we are a membership-based organization. The sheet that you have with you there behind your agenda, um, this is our final proof. We're going to have these printed. These will go in... Uh, potential prospect member packets and new member packets of how our members can get the most out of their membership. Uh, Pam mentioned the business advocacy. I am a registered lobbyist. Um, you see there we do a bunch of other things. The visibility, the credibility, the networking and the marketing opportunities, our after hours, our business at breakfast series, leadership development. And I know Pam and Jeannie were on the founding committee that formed the Leadership Harrison program. And we are now recruiting for our what class? 26th class wow. of Leadership wow. Harrison. Yeah. Uh, hard to believe, but yeah. So if you have not done it, please consider doing it. Betty is, is in the class that just finished. She'll be graduating at our annual dinner next month. Uh, several others among the, around the tables have, have been through the program. Uh, Deanna's been through it. That's how she got involved. Um, so if you've not done it, uh, applications are available online through our website. Deadline is technically Sunday, but as long as I have them in my inbox Monday, we're good. <laughs> so next w next week the committee will meet. They'll review all the applications. They'll confirm the class, and we'll get started in September. It's one day a month, and it runs from September to May. We go to different member locations. We talk about different aspects of the community. Uh, we encourage at the end of the program for all of the graduates to reach out and volunteer for at least one organization in the community and make a difference. Find their passion, follow it, and, and, and make a difference in your community. And that's, that's what the leadership program is really about. Uh, in addition to helping you grow in your person, your professional life and your personal life, but also making a difference in your community. Uh, so we're really proud of that program. Um, Kylie couldn't be here today. Kylie Radcliffe is chair of the program currently. Um, our education committee has been kind of on hold with COVID. They haven't really been able to get in the school system and get to do anything with our students. So. Uh, Dora Stutler, our superintendent, is on our chamber board this year, and I've reached out to her and said, "When when you're comfortable letting uh, you know the business community back in the classroom, we're ready to go back and, and and help our kids realize what opportunities they have here in Harrison County in North Central West Virginia, and that they don't have to leave to have vibrant careers and and, and whole lives here in uh, our region." and in the county. Um, so we're waiting for her to give us clearance to get back to doing that. <clears throat> Our legislative committee reviews uh, the legislative actions and processes and, and bills and issues that are happening down in Charleston. They also hosted the Meet the Candidate event that we had in April. They'll be doing a legislative preview event in November leading into next year's legislative session. So we'll have more information coming out about that. Uh, we do have a 21 member board of directors that is elected by the membership. Seven directors are elected to a three year term each year. Um, so those election ballots will be coming out in November and they'll be due in December. Um, so if that's something that interests you, just let us know. Uh, it is a nomination process. The nominating committee will select 
14 member names to be on the ballot and that'll go out to all of the members and the top seven get elected to a three-year term. So it's a very democratic process can, can, can compared to other chambers who have a strict nomination process. Um, so, but if you're interested in that, please let me know. Because uh, like I said, that'll be coming up in November for, for next year. Um, and also on the back of this is a membership application. Membership is based on number of employees. So you'll see closer to the bottom there, we have tiered rates based on the size of the business. Smaller ones pay less than our larger members. And many of our members have more than one contact. So each additional member is listed on there as well. Um, so any questions about the chamber, our committees, our board, how we're governed, our mission? That was a quick overview. But it was good. <clears throat> the Holiday Inn Express and Suites out at uh, White Oaks. Uh, they've been there for quite a while, but they recently went through a major remodeling and they're ready to open up, reopen, so they want to have a grand reopening to showcase their remodel. That'll be August the 11th. August 24th, Buff City Soap. That's on Emily Drive next to Ashley Furniture. They are killing it with social media and marketing. They were downtown Clarksburg yesterday with a little red wagon <laughs> going up and down both sides of the street, handing out free samples. Uh, they are kicking it and they're not even here yet. Um, so I'm sure they're gonna, they're, they're gonna do well in that location. And then Blackwell Realty, uh, they're actually located in Shinston and that'll be August the 26th. So those are the ones we have confirmed coming up. We have several others that we're working with that we don't have confirmed dates with yet. If you speak to any new business or, have, or know any new businesses that you happen to be talking to, have them reach out to Marla. They're out there, they get it covered, get back to the office, put it to press or put it on the, the five or six o'clock news. So, you know, we try to stay with that 8, 11 a.m. Monday through Friday sweet spot. Um, we've had people want to do them on weekends. You're not going to get any media coverage. So we really highly discourage that. If someone wants to have a grand opening on a Saturday, then we, we ask them, let's do a ribbon on Friday, get you all that publicity sun Friday afternoon and evening on social media and on the television, and then have your open house Saturday for the public. And, and it works out that way as well. But we do like to coordinate those a little close to the vest. So please you know, have them reach out to Marla, check the calendar. You know, we, we like to invite our local elected officials. We we'll like to make sure the mayor can be there or someone. That doesn't happen on short notice on a Friday afternoon. So. Well, and that's probably a really big element that we left out because you know, uh, you know how we know what we're doing, but we should have told you guys. Um, that is one of the things that the chamber does try to help them with. The chamber, when they call the chamber, Marla tells them, you know, these are ideal times for it. This is when you will get the most you know, people coming. This is when city officials will, because we coordinate with all the city and county officials. This is when they'll be there. This is when we can get you media coverage. So they do try to help them line up. If they don't have a marketing person in house, they try to help them, tell them how the ribbon cutting should go and give them a lot of really good advice. And so that's something that the office does prior to us going to the ribbon cutting. Right. Um, we love them to, be, to join beforehand. Uh, but we always follow up with them afterwards, which is one of the things we have on the agenda today to wrap up with. Uh, you have a, Pam has a list of some of the ones that we've done over the last year that have not joined. So we want to reach back out to them and say, you know, you know, want to touch base with you. How's it going since we did your ribbon? Uh, is business still good? Would you, now would be a good time to consider joining the chamber. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. We'd like to get you involved. Uh, and try to close that deal and get them to join. One of the things coming up, our business after hours. That's our most popular networking event. They're always five to seven p.m. Dates, days of the week vary, usually a Tuesday or Thursday. Our next one coming up is August the 9th. That'll be at Central Supply, and along with Baton Hollow Winery. And their theme is gonna be kicking off the football season. 
And then we have one September the 29th, WYK is partnering with the Robinson Grand to celebrate Oktoberfest. That will be at the Robinson Grand. And I know James is interested in making that an annual event, kind of like our Mardi Gras kickoff in the first of the year. This will be an Oktoberfest annual event in the fall. And a true Oktoberfest is actually in September, so don't yes. let them. <laughs> it starts in late September and runs through about the middle of October. So we do have mid-October open and early November open for business after hours, if you know anyone that would be considering one. Another event we have coming up is our business at breakfast. Those are held at the courtyard by Marriott in White Oaks. Our next one is August the 12th or Friday. Um, and this, this uh, next month's topic will be cryptocurrency 101. We had a lot of questions from some of our members. What is it? How do you invest in it? What's the risk? How is it backed? just too many questions for us to answer. So we reached out, got a couple of guys from MVB uh, Financial that's gonna do an overview of the whole cryptocurrency market and then how that's affecting investing uh, as we go forward. Our biggest event of the year is our annual dinner. That is coming up on Monday, August the 22nd. It's our 103rd annual dinner. We, um, have reached out and scheduled both Senator Capito and Senator Manchin to speak. We will have our leadership graduation for this past year's class that finished up in May, including Betty. So congratulations. So we'll have certificates for all of those. And we'll also be giving our annual awards, which our executive committee will select next week um, what categories and award recipients we want to honor this year uh, as part of the dinner as well. So this year it's going to be at the Pierpont Community and Technical College hangar at the, the airport. It's on the back side of Industrial Drive. Um, it's a larger venue. If we go to Bridgeport Conference Center, we would be capped at 250 people. We're already over 200 and we're still four weeks out. Um, so I did not want to cap it with having put two potential senators or two senators as our, our guest speakers. So we wanted to find a location where we could do that. However, the conference center is going to cater it for us. And they're going to partner with um, the Pierpont Culinary Program and have the culinary students assist with serving uh, that evening. So um, it should go very well. We'll have a reception to start the evening at 6, dinner at 6.30, program and speak, speaking to follow. So very nice event. Hopefully everyone will look forward to attending that as well. And if you're going with your company and you're sitting at a table with your company, then great. If you're not the ambassadors, we will have to, we will sit together. So if you're an individual that wants to come and your company's not getting the table, you know, just go ahead and make a reservation through the chamber. Then make sure you get a hold of Marla and let her know that you're with the ambassadors council. And then uh, and we won't joke all night. We'll be. <laughs> One of the things we do ask the ambassadors is your ambassadors to the chamber if you will assist us that evening because it's just marla and i on staff uh with greeting with checking folks in making sure uh, folks know where to go you know we'll have the reception in the rotunda and then just guide them back to the hangar portion um dinner will be a buffet and then we'll have a dessert and coffee bar afterwards um so looking forward to to that as well our meeting dates, we do have the ambassador meeting dates for the rest of this year. Uh, they're always on a Tuesday at noon. So the next ones will be August the 30th, September. But, yeah, I was gonna say that one's a little different because if we had it, it would be the day after the annual dinner and we're, yeah, not, we're doing. not doing the day after. Yeah. <laughs> so normally it's the third, <clears throat> fourth Tuesday, fourth Tuesday, fourth Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. But we had to shuffle a couple of them around because of the other events. September 27th. November 1st, because um, the week before that is our North Central West Virginia Business Summit. We'll be in Morgantown all day that day. So we'll bump that down a week to November 1st. And then November 29th will be our final meeting for 2022. And that'll be the week after Thanksgiving. Um, so we have four more meetings this year. 
Um, we'll have new member packets as we get members to join that will be available for ambassadors to deliver. That gives you an opportunity to stop in, thank them for joining, um, give them their welcome packet along with their plaque. Um, we also do thank you cards, which Marla and I have been doing just as, as folks renew. Uh, we've been making phone calls to the past to renewing members, just picking up, hey, this is Jim from the Chamber, I'm an ambassador, just wanna thank you for renewing your membership. Is there anything we can help you with? Just a touch point to welcome our member back and, and keep them in the loop. Um, we try to do that a couple times throughout the year. Any questions? Anything else I'm missing? Pam, anything? Yeah, that's a lot of info. Mm -hmm. 